What's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking about hip internal rotation. And if you've been following my content for a while now, you notice how much of an emphasis I put on hip internal rotation. And there are a few major reasons why. And I wanted to talk about those reasons, but also discuss what internal rotation is, what it does, and why it's important. So let's talk about a few reasons why it's important, and then we'll talk about some of the mechanics. So. First of all, hip internal rotation isn't just a joint action. Yes, it does involve the joint and it's important to have full variability or full movement at the joint. And when I say full, it's context dependent, right? I don't need full range of motion in certain circumstances. In certain sports, maybe adventation, maybe it's advantageous not to have full range of motion at the joint. Maybe it's not advantageous to have full hip flexion, but hip internal rotation is quite important because it reflects our ability to accept force and produce force. So having the ability to do both, accepting force being deceleration or going into a cut, producing force is the ability to propel ourselves forward, the ability to move a very heavy object or move into a different direction with speed. So that is coming out of a cut, driving that hip extension. The other component of it is just being able to move throughout the day. Every time I land when I'm walking, when I'm sitting up, when I'm coming up from a seated position, when I'm bending over, when I'm hinging, when I'm rotating, all these things require hip internal rotation. And so with that, it's pretty important movement. And based on all that, it sounds like a pretty important movement. Now here's the thing, every movement is quite important context specific, but a lot of times when you see certain compensations like arching your lower back, hyperextending your knees, dumping your foot, flaring your ribs, rounding your shoulder, pushing your head forward, having a pelvic rotation, having knock knees, having knees that are going out towards the side or bowing, these are all my inability to internally rotate for different reasons. Now, I'm not gonna go into every single one of those reasons. If you want to understand those, you can check out my Evolved Biomechanics Mentorship. We talk about every single one of them, what they look like, why they happen and what they do. But the reason why a lot of these things happen is because I am missing that hip internal rotation. So I've gotta move my center of mass towards my toes because I don't have that motion in my hips, so I'm going to push my body forward to be able to try to propel myself forward. As I mentioned, our ability to accept force or absorb force is hip internal rotation, but our ability to produce force is also internal rotation. I know that's a bit confusing, so let me talk just a little bit about that. So if I want to accept force, Let's say I'm going into a cut, I'm landing. This is where my hip is going to be in a flex position. So just think that my left foot is forward in a split squat. So that front leg is going to be in a flex position, but I need to hold myself up. So I need to put a little bit of force into the ground. So that is going to be my internal rotation. If you think of it this way, if my left foot is forward, my right foot is back. If my right hip is extending, that's going to turn my body towards the left. So my pelvis is gonna to turn towards the left. If I'm not able to stay on the inside edge of that left foot, I'm gonna roll on the outside of the foot. That's when you start seeing my knee bowing out towards the side. You see the over rotation of the pelvis. And so a lot of these things are common things that happen when I'm not able to accept force. So I've got this over rotation happen. In order for me to maintain that position in a hip flex position, I'm going to have to internally rotate. Now on the flip side, in the same scenario, I am having my left foot forward, my right foot back in a split squat. Because that right leg is extending, it is producing force. That force production is going to be more hip extension. Still gonna be internal rotation. The difference is, is the internal rotation is gonna be happening not so much at the femur anymore because the femur is in kind of a maxed position. It's going to be more of a pelvis that is going over top of the femur. So I've got this pelvic internal rotation. It's the difference between a squat and a hinge, really, is I've got one that is more femur based, the other one that is more pelvic based. If you wanna dive deep into the differences between the squat and the hinge, you can check out my roadmap to exercise selection, talk a lot more about 
the unique differences between the two, the compensation that will happen between the two, and why each one of these internal rotations is quite important. So I've got this hip flexion internal rotation, I've got this hip extension internal rotation. So it goes without saying that each one of these is gonna require different strategies in order to improve it. So let's just say I've got somebody who is missing that hip flexion and internal rotation. It's also early mid stance when that foot is in front of us. Well, I'm going to be doing exercises that are going to require more hip flexion based exercises that are going to keep my center of mass back because if my pelvis starts to go forward, I start to lose internal rotation. The reason why that is, is because if my pelvis moves forward, I'm gonna reduce space in the hip. So now that femur is not able to move as well. So I need to do exercises that are gonna simultaneously bring the pelvis back and put my foot in front of me. This is why I mentioned the split squat. The front foot elevated split squat, in fact, is really good at promoting this. If I add a little bit of a heel elevation, even better. But let's just say on the other hand, on this right leg where we need to promote more hip extension, maybe there's a pelvic position issue that we have to address, maybe there's a limitation hip extension, then I'm going to put the leg in front of me again, same kind of split squat position, but instead of doing a front foot elevated, I'll do a rear foot elevated split squat. Or instead of doing a cable chop on that left side, I'm gonna do a cable lift. So you can start to see how this hip internal rotation can be different and how different exercises are needed in order to reinforce the movement that we're looking for. So if I see somebody who's got this back that is arched, I'm suspecting that they're probably missing internal rotation, among other things, of course. And I would still have to assess to determine where they are in space because there could be a rotation, there could be other things happening that could be contributing to that position, right? And that's not to say that an anterior pelvic tilt is a bad thing. A lot of people benefit from an anterior pelvic tilt. It is context specific as always, but in my experience, a lot of times when we open up this internal rotation, we get a lot of great changes, not just from a mobility standpoint, but from a muscle tension standpoint, in some cases, pain standpoint. And we're just giving them more movement options so that when they are in certain positions, they have that capacity in that space. So if I want to improve this hip flexion internal rotation, this hip extension internal rotation, because they require different forces, different tension requirements of the muscle, different contractility of that muscle, different speed in which they contract, and different joint positions. So it's important to understand which one we're trying to focus on so we can pick the best exercises that are suited for that movement limitation. So I hope this breakdown helped. If it did, don't forget to share it with someone who may also find this helpful. And if you could rate it, like it, subscribe, that'd be super helpful. I'm trying to spread the message as best as I can to help as many trainers, therapists, and movement professionals as possible. Thank you so much.